Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Today I wanted to talk to you about cask strength whiskey. Now a lot of new whiskey drinkers have entered the community recently because of all of the craft distilleries that have opened up. They're everywhere and a lot of them are trying to set themselves apart and one of the things that they do is put out cask strength whiskeys. You don't see it a ton from craft distilleries because it's a little bit more expensive but you see it enough and I wanted to make sure that you knew what that even means. So. One of the most significant things that a distiller can do to change the flavor of their whiskey is bottle it at a different ABV or alcohol by volume. Now one of the things that you're going to see a lot is 40% ABV whiskeys. Now you might have wondered why. Now the easy answer is that it's the legal definition of the smallest amount of ABV that you can have in a whiskey in order to call it a whiskey. But there's a little bit more to it and I'll get into that in a minute. But as far as cask strength goes, it's not a legal definition. It's just more of an unspoken agreement or more an implied definition from whiskey distillers to the market. And basically what it means is it's going to have a higher proof. Typically you're going to see numbers like 58%, 66%, it's about as high as it'll go. And some of the other things that they're kind of agreeing to is that there's very little alteration. They're not going to add coloring necessarily, they're not going to add too much water if any at all, and in general it's only going to go through kind of like a, a large particle strainer. It's only going to take out the chunks of barrel that might end up in the, in the whiskey itself, but it's not going to go through chill filtration. So one of the things that you might wonder is, you know, like why would they do this? Well, all whiskey is going to be cask strength by definition. It's coming out of the cask at that strength it is cask strength. But when you add water to whiskey, you can bring it down to that 40%, which now makes it more cost effective because clearly water is cheaper than whiskey, right? So if you also have something like, let's say you have a 120 proof or you know 60, 60 ABV, and you have like 100 proof or 50 ABV, if you mix those two together, you're going to get 110, right? Assuming all things equal. That might not be what you want. Maybe you want 100, so at which point you have to add a little bit more water just to bring it down, or you know, in most cases you're, you're going to get 40%. Uh, so adding water, adding consistency, and making everything kind of what you have decided is what you want to present yourself as consistently is why people will do this. Anyway, one thing that you're going to notice here is that there is a lot more bourbon up here than scotch. In fact, right now I have no scotch that is at cask strength, so I couldn't even put one on the screen. But that's for a reason. There are not as many cask strength scotches as there are bourbons, and a big reason for that has to do with climate. So up in Scotland or Ireland or pretty much anywhere that with a colder climate, it's actually harder uh, to make a, a large amount of cask strength whiskey because the whiskey tends to stay about the same ABV when it goes into the barrel or even drop. Now whereas in places where they make bourbon typically it's a little warmer and that bourbon actually goes in and out of the barrel a little bit more and ABV tends to increase because everything but the alcohol is kind of getting sucked into the barrel. So that is why it's a little bit more common to see bourbon. It's a little easier to make. All right, so why would people care if something's cast strength? You know, you might think to yourself, okay, well, it's got more ABV, it gets you drunk, right? It's not necessarily the, the reason that we're doing this. It doesn't hurt, <laughs> it's a nice side effect. But most whiskey drinkers, when they're really trying to appreciate whiskey, they're not trying to get drunk because getting drunk dulls your senses. You can't smell it as well, you can't taste it as well. Um, in, in fact, you just can't enjoy it as well. And that's tend when you move down to the 40% uh, afterwards. But the reason that we care about cask strength is that it tends to have more character. And this isn't always the truth, you know, or, or this isn't always like a hard and fast rule. You can definitely have some 40% ABV whiskeys that have fantastic character and fantastic flavors and smells and everything. But when you have a higher ABV whiskey, you now, as a whiskey appreciator, you can make that whatever you want. Let's say it's 60% and you've decided because you've had this a few times that you really like to add a little bit of water, bring it down to 50% yourself. You add a teaspoon or so and now it's at 50% and that's the way that you like it. That's now your choice. You had more of a thing that you're choosing to dilute versus the other way around. It's a heck of a lot harder to uh, maybe like evaporate out the water and get yourself uh, a higher ABV. It's virtually not something that you're going to do. But when you have more to work with, you can take things out. It's just like cooking. You can add more salt, but you can't take the salt out, right? It's a little, little easier to play around with something that's higher ABV. So one other thing that you can do, and this is just kind of a small aside because a viewer sent this to me. This is 
old limestone mixing water. So they sell specific uh, limestone water, which is what they usually water down bourbon with. And you can buy something like this. You don't have to. It's not. It doesn't really make any difference. Just use the water out of your tap or your you know filter it. But but use that water instead. But just so you know that a thing like this even exists. So adding water is is a very common practice. Anyway, that's cask strength whiskey. So I hope that this has been informative. I would love to make more of these kind of videos, but it's hard for me to know what you guys want to learn about. So if there's something that you want to know, leave it down in the comments and I will happily make videos about it. I actually really like making these kind of videos because I feel like I'm teaching something versus just you know smelling a whiskey. So let me know and I thank you for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. Cheers.